Hello friends, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, this is episode number 200, which is a huge number, a very big milestone for the channel, but it comes at a pretty bittersweet time. Uh, sweet because there's some fun things in the video that I'm happy to share with you guys. And uh, you know, like I said, 200, massive number, but not so sweet because of the ongoing health concerns, economic concerns, etc., that uh, are a result of the coronavirus happenings, uh, not only here in the US, but all around the world. I just wanted to make a quick intro here to this video, something I don't normally do, uh, because at the time that I recorded this vlog, things uh, had not gotten as bad as they uh, appear to be getting and probably going to continue to be getting uh, extra difficult going forward. If you haven't heard, some of the casino poker rooms here in Las Vegas have already started shutting down. I believe the win was the first to shut down um, some of the casinos that we partner with for the meetup games. They have also started shutting down, in particular, the gardens in Los Angeles where this vlog was filmed. They've announced that they are closing indefinitely. The next meetup game that was supposed to take place in Chicago with the Chicago Charitable Games, they have shut down as have all of the casinos in Illinois for at least two weeks. I would imagine a lot of the casinos here in Vegas are going to have to follow suit. Uh, I know a lot of the bars and restaurants have already started to do, started to do so, but the casinos themselves seems like they're gonna be uh, holding out as long as possible, but can't imagine that that will last for too long. I imagine their hand will eventually be forced, probably lots of news to come out this week in that regard. So what does that mean for live poker and live poker blogging? Uh, I think it's a great question. It's not one I have a, a, all of the answers to, but I think uh, there are some fun things that we can do in order to stay in touch and hopefully give you guys some entertainment. Probably going to be doing lots of live streams. Uh, hope to do that uh, several times a week. I've done some of that stuff before, particularly around online poker. Maybe we can do some other things as well. Um, want to do plenty of uh, things of that nature in order to stay in touch with you guys as much as possible during this time. So definitely going to be a pause in live poker and live poker blogging, but hopefully we'll stay in good touch and hopefully all of you guys will stay safe and healthy where you are. Okay guys, thanks for tuning in. Here's the vlog. Oh, hello there. Uh, greetings from the soundproof cell phone booth slash poker hand vlogging room here at the Gardens Casino, Hawaiian Gardens, California, Los Angeles area, United States of America. What a weekend this was and is. Uh, today is Monday and I uh, have been here since Wednesday. Thursday got into the 510 game and uh, it was going substantially well. Uh, I was up about $2,000 at one point and then uh, things took a turn for the worse and we lost all that profit plus an additional $200. So, uh, so riding the waves here. Game was decent, just uh, ran bad in some spots and what can you do? Ended up looking a loss there. A small one though, about as small of a loss as it gets in a 510 game and often being played as a 510-20 game. Friday was a fun one though. Friday was the meetup game here at Hawaiian Gardens. We were playing 5-5 and we ended up getting a lot of tables. Once again, myself on the roller coaster, but was actually uh, on the uh, the dips, the dips of that roller coaster for most of the night. Things did not go well in the early going. Things did not go great in the middle stages. Later on, at the last table of the night, we do manage to get pocket tens in versus ace king, all in pre flop. All right, let's 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 get it in and run it. I can beat seven high. Call. Call. Okay, I have a pair this time. Okay. Oh, we need and the board runs out safe for the pocket tens. So uh, that's uh, very helpful. That's helpful for uh, a man who is uh, stuck most of the night. We managed to win a couple of other pots there towards the end. The very last table gets us all the way unstuck. We were down about $800 at our lowest point and at our highest point, we cash out of the meetup game for a profit of $93. So victory, baby. Sweet, sweet victory. So that was fun. Uh, had a bunch of drinks with a lot of people. I made our way over to the bar afterwards as per usual and had a nice beverage or three. That was my Friday. Saturday was a tournament in which we lowered the buy-in for the meetup game. Previous two had been $340. This meetup game, we dropped it down to $250 and we did $50 bounties on all the players. 
$100 bounties on myself and Brad Owen. And the price point seemed to uh, be more attractive to more people. We got 102 total entrants. The tournament was a lot of fun. It seems like people really enjoyed the bounty uh, style of the tournament. I enjoyed it as well. So I think for the next meetup game, we will probably do that keep that same buy-in price point, keep the bounties on there for everybody, spread the money around a little bit more. And uh, first place was still over $5,500 in that event. Uh, as for me, I did not uh, get $5,500. I did not get any dollars out of the prize pool, although I did get two bounties. Long story short, I go out in 20th place and uh, no, no further prize money aside from the two bounties that I got along the way. So knock two people out, get 50 bucks each. That's $100. I'll take it. No one's going to get rich off of those bounties, but uh, fun event nonetheless. 102 players in the tournament. Can't complain with that. Watch the UFC fight later on. The uh, the women's fight was an epic fight. One of the best fights I've ever seen. Got to watch that for free over here at the Gardens Casino. They had it on at the bar and uh, that was pretty cool. But what was not cool was that I played 510 after that tournament and things did not go well either. Hand of the night from that session, we're playing once again, we're playing 51020 as we are often playing. The player in the hijack limps in for 20, cut off, I believe, raises it up to $100, button folds, and we have ace king of diamonds in the small blind. Gonna go ahead and three bet this to 330, I believe, something like that. The limper folds and the cutoff decides on a four bet. Four bets it up to about 750 or 775, something of that nature. Considering that we're out of position, I think, uh, I think the five bet jam makes a lot of sense. Whenever there's a limper in there, it always contributes to the, uh, the old leveling war. I've mentioned that in previous videos, won't get into all that stuff. But anyway, we have ace king suited and I've got about 23 hundred dollars in my stack. I was stuck uh, for a long time uh, in this session and I battled all the way back to just about even. This hand comes up. The $2,300, I'm going to send it into the middle. We uh, are, again, we're playing 5, 10, 20, so it's a, a little bit over 100 big blinds, but not that much more. And again, like I said, out of position, I'd rather just jam it in. If we get called, let's see all five cards. So that's what happens. I jam it in. My opponent thinks for a little while we fade the snap call, which I'll always is good news, but he does decide on a call. I roll it over and he shows his pocket queens and he asks if we want to run it twice. I say, sure, let's see five cards twice. First board looks pretty good when we flop a king, turn is a jack. However, there's a devastating queen on the river card of the first board, which is really bad news because we lost one of our outs with a king on the board and sure enough, we cannot improve on the second board. So we get scooped in a pretty big pot there, almost $5,000. Not great, not great to uh, be playing for a long time and get all the way unstuck and then have that unlucky situation arise. Uh, usually gonna chop that hand, ace-king versus queens, classic coin flip, but not this time. Things not going too great for me uh, on this trip so far. And then that brings us all the way up to today. Here we are, Monday back at the gardens and back ready to grind. I've been at the uh, 510 game here. Find the 510, occasionally 20, and I've got the hand histories to prove it. So I'm not sure if the straddle is like the best idea in this start in this sort of a game, in a capped game. I don't know, it depends on the player, it depends on the lineup. It can often have the re reverse intended effect because often players will play a little bit more snug. Uh, they can't play a, a wider variety of hands because the implied odds are shorter and less. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. Have to think about that one for a little while, but in his hand, 5, 10, 20. We looked down at queen, nine of clubs, and uh, considering all of that that I just mentioned, considering that we're under the gun, this is probably a fold, but we're not gonna get unstuck by folding suited two gappers uh, from under the gun. So I make it $50 to go. The cutoff calls and we go heads up to a flop, which comes down king, seven, deuce, one club, rainbow. Pretty good flop for me, considering we have all this potential sets here and plenty of backdoor possibilities. So I put out a small C bet of $35. My opponent makes the call as I expect him to pretty often. So we're looking for a card that will allow us to continue to barrel on the turn and the river, which does not come. Uh, the three of spades lands on the turn here. I believe it's the second spade. So uh, just gonna shut it down now. And if we face a bet, just gonna have to let it go. That is what happens. I check and the cutoff that's $100. We're just gonna have to let this one go. Any jack, 10 or club would uh, be a reasonable card to barrel. Maybe even an ace. Uh, and then we can also improve on a queen or a nine, but uh, offsuit three or three of spades, not good. Let it go. In this next hand, still playing five, 10, 20 here. I look down at ace 10 of diamonds after it folds around to me on the button, raises it up to $50 again, and only the small blind makes the call. Flop comes down jack 10, four, rainbow. Small blind checks it, and we could bet forward protection here, get some value from some draws maybe, maybe some non-believing pairs, but uh, I decided to check it back. Also a reasonable option. Turn is a six of clubs, second club. This time he leads out for $50, pretty straightforward call. Rivers and offsuit eight. 
he checks it over to me. That eight completes queen nine, but maybe not too much else. So we could consider going for some thin value here, but with second pair, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my showdown value. I check it back and my opponent shows us king 10. So we're gonna win this one, but uh, I think we could maybe go for some small value there. Seems unlikely that he's gonna have a jack after betting relatively small on the turn and then just checking it down uh, on the river. So something to consider, but happy to drag in a pot here. Once again, 5, 10, 20 here, looking down at ace, queen off suit this time from under the gun. Not even a hand that we uh, are getting out of line with, well within the opening range this time, make it $50 to go. The player on the button calls and the straddler calls. So three ways to a flop, which comes down king, queen, jack with two diamonds. Straddler checks, pretty similar situation to last hand. I'm gonna check it with a middle pair here, take my showdown value to later streets, and the button checks as well. Turn is a brick, it's a four. Stryler checks again, and now I think it's a close call between betting and checking again. Same situation uh, as before. We still have very good showdown value, but we also could go ahead and start betting for protection. Equity denial is a more fancy term, and uh, just charge some draws. Uh, any diamonds, straight draws, uh, maybe a hand like jack 10, queen 10, king 10, not king 10, queen 10, jack 10, Paris plus draws, naked draws, all those things. So I put out a bet of $105. The button folds pretty quickly and the straddler things for a little bit before making the call. Turn is an offsuit eight, which doesn't change anything. He checks it over me. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take that showdown value. I check it back, expecting to win a decent amount of the time. But my opponent rolls over king queen for a flopped top two pair that uh, checked through on the flop and then checked again on the turn. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that holding. I would expect him to go ahead and start value betting that hand. Uh, if I'm value betting ace queen, I would certainly expect him to value bet. I don't know, maybe he knows something I don't know. Uh, he seems like a solid player, good player, and uh, he is the winner. Okay, back to regular 5'10 now, looking down at ace nine of diamonds from under the gun. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in for $30 raise. The player two to my left uh, originally tries to limp in, but then he sees that he acted out of turn, sees the $30, and decides still within a reasonable price range and makes the call for 30. Heads up to a flop of ace, queen, four with two hearts. Considering that we flopped top pair, but a pretty weak kicker, all things considering, I'm gonna go ahead and check it for pot control. And my opponent does not check it for pot control. He bets 45 bucks. I'm not going anywhere. Top pair, I make the call. Turn is not a great card. It is a third heart. I'm gonna go ahead and check it, play and flow. My opponent puts out another bet, although it's kind of on the small side here. You only have it's $50. So there's a lot of sizings that I would be happy to fold to, a lot of standard sizings. Uh, $50, I guess maybe we could consider a fold since I would expect him to check back with a lot of hands uh, now that the third heart is out there. But for 50 bucks, I think it's a pretty reasonable call still. So I toss it in, let's head to a river card, which unfortunately is another heart. Our hand gets worse and worse with each street. I check it and this time my opponent checks it back, announces an ace and my opponent shows ace nine, but with the nine of hearts. So uh, we get a little bit unlucky there. We had the uh, suited variety, he had the offsuit variety, which I guess he had more flush draws than we do. One of those flush draws gets the job done after he is uh, free rolling us on the turn. Still playing 510 here without, without a straddle and we see a raise from under the gun plus two. Uh, to $30 and we look down at 10-8 of clubs. Could go any which way with this hand, I feel. Um, might be getting a little bit out of line here, maybe starting to feel a little bit of frustration when I choose the aggressive route to three bet this hand to $100. Folds back around to the initial raiser who asks how much we have, which is only about $1,000. Uh, haven't topped off my stack so far. He decides that a call is in order for him. So we're going heads up to a flop, which does not improve our hand. Nine, four, three with two hearts. So we do have some backdoor straight possibilities. And so he checks it over to me and I think betting is fine considering that we have 10 high. Uh, would for sure prefer to see a club on the board. I'm not too sure what sort of range advantage or nuts advantage we have on this flop considering we would not three bet pocket fours or pocket threes. We'll never have any of the two pair combos either. So not a whole lot going on on this flop for us, but considering we have 10 high, I do think a bet is in order and I bet $100 again. That being said, I don't know if I need to bet that much. I think we can down bet there and uh, maybe a smaller size around 60 or so might be better, but I choose $100 and my opponent calls. The turn does improve our hand. It is an off suit eight. So we improve to a pair. My opponent checks and this time I'm gonna take my showdown value. Uh, I check it back, although once again, I think betting would be somewhat reasonable. Could bet for protection. We could bet for value versus some heart draws, some straight draws. My opponent was probably gonna have a lot of middling pairs as well, and also perhaps some over pairs such as tens or jacks that he didn't want to go ahead and get in pre-flop. So I don't know. 
kind of borderline situations here in this hand. Maybe that all stems from playing a borderline hand and maybe not playing it as well as I could have. Anyway, I check it back here on the turn and the river is an offsuit deuce. So that improves the most obvious straight draw. A hand like five, six of diamonds could easily find its way here. And my opponent is gonna go ahead and represent that type of a hand when he just jams all in. So I think facing that, that uh, bet size here on the river and with a pretty weak hand, one of the weakest hands that we'll have taking this line, aside from, I guess our ace high hands or king high hands that just give up on the turn, we do have a pair. So uh, we can beat some heart draws. So, I mean, I guess the call is reasonable, but I'm just gonna go ahead and let this go. Not really loving the way I played this hand. Not the worst hand I've ever played, but definitely not the best. All right, in this next hand, still playing 510 here, action folds over to the button who brings it in for a raise of $35. Small blind gets out of the way before we look down at the greatest, most beautiful, most best hand ever created. Known to man, pocket aces, the black variety. So. Three bet time, gonna go ahead and raise it up. 4X his bet to $140. My opponent decides that's still not enough money, which of course is music to our ears. He's gonna go ahead and put in a four bet. He makes it $340 here, so uh, things are looking uh, beautiful. Uh, finally, some good news. And uh, with this hand in particular, I think we can set the trap here. We have pocket aces and we're not gonna have to worry about too many flops and uh, getting uh, unlucky or uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, take our chances here and take this hand to the streets. I go ahead and flat call, and the flop comes down absolutely beautiful. 7-7-3. Seven, seven, Two clubs as well. So we got the backdoor flush draw working for us, and all other uh, hands that we're betting for value, that we're for betting for value pre-flop, are definitely going to continue on this flop. So when I check it, sure enough, my opponent puts out a bet, and it's a pretty big one. He bets damn near $600. Thankfully, we did reload shortly before this hand started. So uh, I started with about $1,500 and here on the flop, I have about $1,000 total. And after he bets almost $600. All right, I'm all in. All right, well done. Only one move left and that is to jam all the chips into the middle. Go ahead and check raise all in. And my opponent has a pretty easy decision here as it's not that much more money. He's gonna have to call with all his pairs and he goes ahead and makes the call. Turn is another club, which looks great. As mentioned, I have the ace of clubs and the river is like a nine, I think, red nine. That's good news because my opponent goes ahead and mucks his hand. So the pocket aces to the rescue. Pocket aces are gonna get it done here. Uh, they get us unstuck for the day. We got into that poker game, that 510, sometimes 20 game for $2,300. We added on $800 after the initial $1,500 buy-in. Cash out of that game for 2,827 bucks. So that is going to be a profit from today's game of $527. Glad to get out of the one day hole, book a win today, but it's not enough to get out of the uh, the negative balance on the trip. Whatever, we lose some money here uh, on the weekend, on the weekend's uh, festivities, but a very positive uh, weekend for all things considered. 15 tables worth of people at the cash game on Friday and 102 players in the tournament on Saturday. Also, there was an interesting event that happened in uh, Las Vegas while we were away here in LA. There was the Global Poker Index Awards. Your guy here was up for the Best Vlogger Award, which is incredibly subjective, and I have no idea what criteria they use. Our next award is for Vlogger of the Year. Presented to the vlogger who not only releases quality, well-produced content, but has an innate ability to connect with their audience. But if we happen to take that one down, it would be the third year in a row to win Best Vlogger Award and our fourth GPI Award in three years. And the winner is...
Wow. Do not play PLO. Here's the money today, congratulations. So, a beer koozie and cookies, sweet cheats, a poker chip from best vlog watchers in the entire universe. Andrew Nemi.
Unfortunately, Andrew Nimi will not be here tonight, so he sent this following video for us. Hello. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this award. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Eric over at the Global Poker Index for all the work that he does in putting together this awesome event. And my apologies for, once again, not being able to be there. But many thanks, many thanks to many people, definitely not the least of which my fiance Boosie, who has helped me uh, in countless ways, not only as a content creator and a poker player, but has helped me grow in many different ways as a person. And I want to say thanks to all of my fellow content creators out there in this genre who have stepped up to the plates, they've put themselves out there, and they've put in tons and tons of work that goes into creating this type of content. This category is obviously much, much bigger than just me. Shout out to my buddy Brad Owen, whose channel is easily the most popular, to Jamin, whose style is always unique and fun, to Daniel, who kicks it out every single day during the summertime, to the trooper who was out there doing his thing before anybody else was, Johnny, Marley, Trevor, Matt Vaughn, Oliver, Matt Kiefer, P's and Q's, Charles, Derek, Andrew Locke, Ben Deach, Mr. Bill, Rampage, Jeff Boski, Christy, Ryan DePaulo, Mariano, Detroit Poker, Greg Feeney and Wes and tons of other creators. The list goes on and on. I see you out there. I hope you keep doing your thing. I hope you can stay creative. I hope you can keep delivering both for yourself and for your audiences, for the people who enjoy your stuff and for the people who can't make it to the poker table as often as they'd like and are happy to see you keep doing your thing. Cheers, guys.